Next, a session produced by our underwriter, Bear. All right. What you just saw on the screen is actually the future of farming. My name is Mark Young. I'm the Chief Technology Officer of a company called the Climate Corporation, which is the digital farming division within Bayer Crop Science. And I'm joined here on the stage today by Mr. Kamal Bell, a teacher, a farmer, a youth advocate, and founder of the Sankofa Agricultural Academy, as well as a couple of his students, Mr. Cameron Jackson, uh, whose bees you just saw on the screen earlier, and Mr. Kamani King, who is a great prototype for what the future of farming really looks like. There's two things about my job that are my absolute favorite. The first is I get to travel all over the world and talk to farmers of all different backgrounds and all different capabilities. And the second favorite part is I get to meet the younger generation, get them excited about a career in STEM and a career in agriculture. And I'm inviting you all to join me to do a little bit of both up here today. Kamal, can you tell us a little bit about Sankofa Farms? Yes, I can. Thank you, Mark. I was an agricultural teacher in Durham, North Carolina for four years, and one of the things that I noticed was that the school system didn't give a lot of opportunity to the young black males. So at Sankofa Farms, we developed an agricultural academy that would expose this, this demographic and these young men to the possibilities of change that exist within the field of agriculture. So we've grown from four students now to seven, and this year we actually harvested produce and we had honey as well. So they're really growing with the farm. So as we've built this sustainable and self-sufficient operation, we have received help from Bear Crop Science in developing our beekeeping operation. And now this really represents an interesting dynamic because you have this global entity that has like a mass amount of resources working with a small 12 acre farm in Durham, North Carolina. So today, everyone's gonna hear from two of our trailblazers, two young men who are paving the way, and not only are they embodying the true mission of what Sankofa truly means, they're also changing the perspective of what agriculture looks like within the black community. That's awesome, and it's absolutely our pleasure at Bayer Crop Science to, to sponsor the work that you guys are doing at Sankofa. The thing I think is really interesting about Sankofa is it accomplishes two of the things that we know are key uh, to the success of agriculture. One is getting our community closer to what happens on the farm. Um, we've, we've really grown apart from what happens on the, on the farm. Not many of us are involved in farming, and, and a lot of us don't know today where our food comes from. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is engaging the next generation to get them excited about what happens in agriculture. They're absolutely the, the future. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was 16, I was working at Kmart. Um, but uh, Mr. Cameron Jackson here, he's 16, and he is a certified beekeeper, and those were his bees that you just saw. So Cameron, can you tell us a little bit about how, how this all came about? Well, uh, I first got involved with bees one day when we was at the farm. Mr. Bell jokingly asked us all, do we want bees on the farm? Everyone dismissed it like it wasn't a discussion to be had, but I was the one to say, why not have bees? Our first, like when he was going over the terms, he told me that if I didn't take care of the bees because I got stung and I didn't like them anymore, I would still have to take care of them and I would have to, you know, feed them. <laughs> I agreed to his terms and our first encounter with the bees, we didn't have any of the proper equipment to effectively go into the hives. So I actually got stung on my elbow, and at that point, I was, I don't want these things. <laughs> so, and, but as time progressed, I started to come attached to the bees in some sense. Because once you get to see them start something from nothing, you get to see the intricate things that they can actually do in the hive by themselves without any maintenance from humans, it's pretty amazing. That's great, I think that's an important tip for our audience who might wanna take care of bees, that if you wanna take care of bees, the suit is an important piece of equipment. Yes. Uh, we've got a picture of your hive up there on the screen. What can you tell us about that? Well, first thing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start off with a question. Uh, can you find the queen bee? And the reason for this question is because it's one of the first things that we check for in the Healthy Economy Checklist. That's, that's great. Uh, Kamal, can you tell us a little bit more about, about this colony checklist? Yeah, so the, the Healthy Colony Checklist is a, 
an arrangement of six steps and there's six things that you're trying to look for every time you go into your beehive. So Cameron asked you, could you find the queen? That's because the queen is the essential component of the hive. And once you find her and have all these other steps checked off, you know that you have a healthy colony. That's great. So, so we're sitting here in Washington, D.C. today having this conversation, and you're using this as a checklist to check on your bees back in North Carolina. Yes, yeah, so once we hit the plane and get back in North Carolina, we're going to put our bee suits on and get our bees ready for this winter. Yeah, again, the suits, very important part of that. Uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks for that. Now, there's a lot of technology uh, that has been devoted in the last couple of years, especially into pollinators and bee health, and, and, and there's startups that monitor the, the state of beehives. But the other piece of, of the future of ag is what does the future of, of, of the farmer look like? And that's what I think Kamani is a great example of, of what that might look like. Kamani, can you tell us a little bit about how you first got uh, involved in Sankofa Farms? Like Cameron, I got involved with Sankofa Farms in seventh grade when Mr. Bell would come and get us from our classes at Lowe's Grove Middle School and he would take us to the courtyard and we would work with the uh, various projects and one of the projects that stuck with me was uh, being able to hatch baby chickens in the incubator over a 21-day process. That is really neat. So my understanding is you were involved with Sankofa Farms right from the early beginning. Can you tell us a little bit about what the farm looked like at the very beginning? It was a beautiful disaster. <laughs> <laughs> because at the, at the state, the this, uh, beginning of the farming, I pictured a, a big open land of farming, of a farm, and when I, when I got there, it was the complete opposite. It was just a lot of waste, tree stumps, and weeds, and we had, to, we had to literally work and clear the land so we can be able to grow crops and have our bees on the farm. And, and so what does it look like now? It, it looks like an ideal farm when you, when you look on the television and you see a farm, it, it's starting to look like that now. That's, that's good, that's good. So this is amazing to me and what you do at Sankofa Farm. So, so tell, me, tell us all a little bit, how has this experience, getting to experience the, the, what happens on Sankofa Farms, how has that changed you in your perspective? It, it changed me in having a, a, a better output on my future and what, what, what I like to solve in the future with uh, staying connected with farming and getting fellow peers of my kind involved with farming. That's, that's really good. So, yeah, that absolutely deserves some applause. And it's not just about perspective. How do you think this has changed your future outlook? What do you think the future holds for you? I think the future holds us getting, getting more people involved with the farm and being able to break generational poverty in the African American community. Yeah. So Kamal, you've got to be super proud of these guys up here. You know, what else, what else can you, what do you want to add? I there? told myself I wasn't going to cry, but <laughs> just like what they're working on is so much bigger than farming, it's bigger than Sankofa. They're really on to something really special and we just appreciate that Bear has partnered to help us in this in this process, yeah, really appreciate it. I want to. I would seriously want to thank you guys for coming up here and sharing your story with all of us today. Um, we at Bayer Crop Science are absolutely privileged uh, to to do this kind of thing and sponsor, uh, you know, operations like like yours. It is critical that we we get we increase the level of education uh, about agriculture and where our food comes from. Um, that we lean into innovation to solve some of the, uh, the aspects, uh, uh, the challenging aspects that are facing us today in, in agriculture, and just absolutely critical to get uh, the next generation of, of, of folks interested in, in technology and agriculture and, and, and onto the farm, because they absolutely are going to be the, the future of how we, uh, we solve these things. You know, the stakes are incredibly high. Um, there's going to be another two billion people uh, on this planet in the next 30-ish years that we're going to have to figure out how to feed. And it is going to take change and it's going to take innovation. And we know that one of the things that, that drives that is an absolute uh, diversity of perspective, of background, et cetera, to get as, mu as much 
uh, of that opportunity, uh, you know, converted into into action uh, as as we possibly can. So it's uh, it's absolutely going to be driven by folks like yourselves and the initiative at at, uh, at San Cofa Farm. So thank you guys again for for coming up and sharing with all of us, and 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 thank you all for the for the positive reaction. Thank you.